Hey everyone, National Master Sean Lei here. In today's chess video, I have some good news for you guys because next week I should be back to um, regularly uploading videos. In fact, I might be back to streaming, so that's a positive. But in today's video, we're going to be focusing on how to beat lower rated opponents and climb at the lower level of ranges. Alright, let's get straight into it. All right, let's go find um, a relatively low rated opponent to play against. All right, so this is a 1300 rated opponent and we're not going to do anything special. All right, let's just assume you guys, you know, checked out my Philidor videos and you guys memorized them. Um, again, those videos aren't really too complex. Um, so I think most people can digest it even if they're only like 1000, 1300 rated. So again, the point of this opening, we're just getting our two knights here, getting our two pawns here. If you looked at one of the videos, we talked about playing c6 whenever the opponent overextends like this. And if they capture, now we have more pawns in the center. And as we know, in the APCs of chess, which are attack the center, bring out the pieces and castle the king, the person with the center generally is the person who's doing much better. All right, so let's just develop our pieces. Make sure we castle very fast, because as you guys know, the one problem... oh. He's attacking this guy. Let's defend this guy. One of the problems with having more space generally in the opening is that um, is that you don't have as much development. And therefore, that might become a problem in the future as well. And so in this position, he's actually threatening to take this pawn because, well, this knight is pinned over here. Now, technically, I could move this guy. Um, but that wouldn't really work because there are a lot of tactics happening here. So I might have to um, play something like d5. Not the move I want to play, but it's a move that I will play. And if he plays knight over here, I probably will have to play bishop e7. In hindsight, bishop c5 was probably a mistake, but we'll recover from it for sure. Um, oh wait, he can't even play knight here because of the bishops over here. It's a strong bishop. Mm -hmm. Might play bishop d6 or... You know, let's just play bishop e7. Let's just break the annoying pin over here. Um... One thing to note, something that is quite important to know, actually, is that um, uh, I forgot what I was saying, actually. Um, all right, so his knight's coming here. That's a good square for the knight to go to, actually. It's uh, targeting my very strong bishop over here. Not something I really want. Um, let's play here or something. Yeah, let's just ask him to take my bishop if he really wants to. And after, he might take here. I'm not sure if he wants to do that, though. It's possible. He might try to double my pawns, but doubling the pawns there isn't actually that great. Okay, so this just shows that he's just trying to take here. But it's actually not that good for him if he does that. So if he wants to double my pawns like this, I'm completely down for him to double my pawns because that just makes my center stronger, right? I don't really care about my weaknesses on the king's side because he has nothing he can attack with. Remember, weakness is only something that is easily attacked and not easily defended, right? Um, Alright, so he just does that. I can just play bishop g6, just making sure my bases are covered for now. You might do it now, I suppose. I'm just move my rook this way. Oh, is he trying to come here? Actually, I can just move my queen out of the pin and move it like somewhere here or something. Just attack that pawn and ask him how he's going to defend it. I mean, he probably can just play knight c4 because I probably can't. Ca uh, can I? I think I can, actually. If I capture here, he might capture over here and I have to capture back with knight. And then he can capture my pawn over here, but then I can capture on c2. Um, should be fine. Let's just capture on a2. Um, I can capture on c2 if he plays rook a1. And if he captures on e5, I can capture on c2. So technically, when everything is said and done, I am up a pawn. Now, in a longer game, you would probably have to calculate that. Like if you have an hour and something on your clock. Obviously, you need to calculate these um, complicated variations. Because th these are the positions in which you either do or you die, right? Let's just take here. Just take as many pawns as possible. Greed is good in chess. Greed is most often very good. Um, let's just trade pieces now. 
golden rule, once you're winning, um, once you're up a lot of material, I'm up two pawns here, just try to make sure you don't get back rank mated, but also um, promote your pawns. Alright, he's making sure he's not getting back rank mated. Um, Alright, let's just push this pawn up. Um, I'm, I'm, maybe h6 was probably better in order to make sure I don't get back rank mated, but at this point, this is fine. Alright, if you want to trade pieces, I'm down to trade pieces. And now we push, 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 making sure we don't blunder to any silly forks. Alright, now we push this guy. Hard for him to defend both, because knights are not very good pieces at defending past pawns. And we're threatening this, we're threatening this. This should be a knockout blow in this position. Um, you know what, let's just do this. Get our queen over here. Um, and our opponent should be resigning in three, two. Oh no, I guess he doesn't. Um, he expected me to just take his rook, but you know this is probably better. When I say probably, I mean most definitely better. All right, let's just try to finish him over here. A lot of people would make the mistake of trying to promote to twenty thousand queens. I do not recommend promoting to twenty thousand queens because if you promote to twenty thousand queens, that leads to easier opportunities to um. Stalemate, which is not good. Alright, let's play against a 1400 rated opponent now. We're just going to try to continue again, nothing too special. We're just going to develop our pieces in a normal fashion, no fancy philidors or anything. We're just going to develop our pieces in a manner that um, gets us into a good middle game. And from then, we can decide what to do after that. Alright, trading off a bad bishop for a good bishop, I like that. All right, which way do I want to take? You know, if I want to keep if I want to keep things symmetrical, this is probably best. Symmetrical means easier play. As you can see, this position is probably already better for me because my well, my bishop is just better than his bishop, right? Does queen belong on b6 because maybe knight here might be annoying? So maybe I'll just put it on e7, just get this rook to c8, something like this. That's a weird move though. Um, I could play knight here and get a bishop, but let's just play here. Get a knight to a strong square. In a regular position, I'd probably be playing a5, a4, getting some play on the a file. But again, there's no need to play for these complicated plans at this level. All you need to do is make sure your pieces are safe. Make sure nothing um, collapses on top of yourself. Now, here I have the option of playing knight here. Now, I do also have the option of taking here. Maybe our opponent messes up by taking this way, but it's not even that good for us. So we're not going to go for any cheapos because cheapos are not good. Um, especially when we're first beginning, right? Now, here, I can play knight here if he takes down here. No, it doesn't quite work for me. I'm just going to do this. Now, something interesting that can't I can go for right now is I can go for a queen set attack right now. Not sure if I want to do that. Um, or I can play queen f6, stopping his knight from coming this way. Also, maybe setting up queen over here, going for a kingside attack. I'm also threatening knight b4 as well, which is um, quite annoying. Though, am I actually threatening knight b4 because he can rook takes here? And then I can't take there. Yeah, not actually threatening that. So, good thing my opponent uh, fell for the phantom threat. Let's just play knight queen over here, getting our queen to over here. Just starting an attack on this side. Um, these are very basic plans, just going for h2 checkmates, right? Not going for a queen set attack, those are too complex. Alright, our opponent's making a lot of light square weaknesses here. Um, but the question is, can, do I have a way to take advantage of that? Don't think so at this point. Do I want to play f5? And then just going for an f4 strategy? Again, that might be a little bit complex, so let's not go for that. Let's just play f5, whatever. Oh, I forgot. It's a three minute game, so we want to play a little bit faster than we are right now. Maybe go for... Hmm. Now this is an interesting move our opponent just played. Um, I was thinking of doing this. Not sure it works though. Now I can play this. This is actually very interesting. Yeah, knight here, pawn captures, rook takes there. Now, this is a complicated tactic, so I'm not sure this would count, and um, I'm not sure how many people might be able to find this one. But it's a cool tactic, because it just sees that there's an undefended piece here, and an undefended piece here, and there's something right for the discovery tax over here. So, that's why I was able to find something like this. But in your own games, if you're not able to find something like this, you just continue on with your plans, and you'll be fine. 
Um, now, and our opponent resigned because in this position we actually had a very nice um, combination which was king over here, queen takes h2, they capture over here, and knight over here would be checkmate. We don't even have to capture the rook. Now, given if this was a longer game, most of you guys should be able to calculate something like this, especially because people of 1400, they're usually pretty good at tactics. Usually pretty good at tactics at this point. All right, um, let's just do one more game today. Let's see if anybody um, shows up over here. While we're waiting for somebody to show up, I, we found somebody, a 1022 rated person. I just wanted to ask you guys, how, how has your days been? Have them been as stressful as mine the past few days? Hopefully not. Um, so this might be our first white game, I actually think. Now you guys know I love my Scotch Gambit, but here my opponent's trying to play a Petrov. I'm just going to play the four knights defense. Here a lot of people make the mistake of playing bishop c4. Please don't play bishop c4 because that allows knight takes e4. So we're going to play bishop b5 instead. Bishop b5, it should be met with bishop over here. Alright, that's interesting. Now the question is, do I have knight takes over here? Knight takes over here, knight takes in d4. I think that should work in this position. Um, should, hopefully. Maybe at knight takes, uh, maybe at bishop takes knight and then takes pawn. Again, you would have to calculate these things. A little bit too lazy at this point, but again, these positions look pretty good, so. In which I get the center. And the bishop here. What more can you want? Five moves into the game, or seven moves into the game here, right? Again, this is a, a small trick you guys should all know. The knight takes e5, and then um, the knight takes e5, then um, d4 strategy. Now, where do I want to put this queen? I don't want to put it here because he has this, but then I could play queen e2. Yeah, let's just play queen d3 so we don't block out this bishop. If he plays knight here, we just play queen e2. Protect c2, make sure no silly shenanigans happen. Just developing pieces again. Bop. Nice place to develop. Maybe we should have castled. I probably would castle this side in a regular game, but again, keep things simple, just castle king side. Alright, let's play bishop here. Does he want to play g5 and ruin his king side? That's the real question. Yeah, let's just castle king side, rook here, rook there. Alright, let's play... Uh, it doesn't really matter where this bishop goes, actually. Oh, whatever, let's go bishop c4. Ooh, but it allows 95, so maybe bishop a4 is fine. Better? Yeah, definitely. Uh, maybe I can retreat it now. Make sure knight here and knight there doesn't ruin anything. Then we can castle rook e1, rook d1. Life is good. I can also play knight there, which is also pretty good, putting pressure on the pin piece. Alright, he plays there. I suppose we should just attack the knight. Pow. Oh no, he has knight at 3 check. <laughs> Bum, bum, bum. All right, we really do need to castle soon. Castling is good for one's health. Again, as you guys can see, my bishop here is very good in this position. It's doing quite a bit. Huh? Interesting. Um. So the idea here is quite simple. Not sure if it works though. If I just take here, he takes over here. I take, he takes. Hmm, he does go up upon in that position. But what if I just take his knight on d4? That's the real question. Yeah. I think I can just take this, right? Don't think he really thought this one through at this point. Because I have queen takes here. Right? And he doesn't have rook over here because I can just capture it. And if he plays rook here, that's fine because I have f3 because he can't play f5, right? Because the bishop on c4. Yeah, he can do this. This is completely fine with me. He can get a pawn back, but a pawn is not a piece, right? Hmm, interesting. He doesn't even want the pawn, I guess. Alright, so he just fell for a simple tactic again. Like... A lot of people don't calculate the in-between moves. That is the type of tactic I would recommend all of you guys try to um, practice a lot because that's the one most people fail. From all the students I've taught in the past, it's the one that people mess up the most. So spend a good, you know, good chunk of your time thinking about an in-between move because they can be your most powerful tool 
or they can also become your greatest um, uh, enemy, trying to use too many discover attacks that don't work. Hehe, <laughs> bishop c2. Also just creating an escape square. <laughs> and he fell for it. I guess you can move the king, yeah, that's fine. But he can he's gonna get back rank mated. <laughs> I can play bishop here and be like, oh no, free h2 pawn. <laughs> and then we can mate them there. Alright guys, so uh these games, um I'm not. I'm quite happy with how they played out. As you, I know you guys can't see, but um, on the side over here, um, the three games I played, we literally just didn't really make any mis. We didn't make any mistakes, any blunders, any missed wins. As you guys can see, we didn't really go for any tactics or anything. Usually, it's our opponents trying to do tactics against us, but they just ultimately failed. Right? They just flop on their face. And all these games, all we did was develop our pieces. And when our opponent makes a mistake, we just took advantage of them. Right? All three of the games we played. Um, we didn't set up anything, we just went for things, and we won. Alright guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more content, especially in the upcoming weeks. Alright guys, see ya!